In this video, I'm going to walk and talk you through how to host an online webinar or a live webinar using Zoom. It is a question I do get asked. It's the tech people get afraid of. There's lots of moving parts. I'm going to show you step by step what you need to do before, during and after you're hosting your online webinar or free training using the Zoom platform. So I'm just going to dive straight on over into my Zoom account and show you the three main things that I would do. So if you haven't got Zoom, you can either Google zoom.us or navigate to it. And then all I need to do is click into my account and I'm going to show you three things. So the firstly, Zoom webinar is different from Zoom meetings or Zoom rooms. It's a different additional bolt on that you actually got to add on to your account as an, an additional subscription. I'm going to show you how to do that now. So from your homepage, from your profile, I haven't actually got Zoom enabled in my account because I'm not launching any webinars recently or in the next uh, month or so. You can actually just buy a, a bolt on uh, in terms of a month. So if you are planning on launching and you want to host up to 500 people, for example, on a live call and you don't want them coming in with their video and their audio on and you want it just to be you sharing slides or hosting, uh, then a Zoom webinar is the way to go. All you need to do is head down to your account management and then you need to go to billing. Now there's a couple of things you need to be aware of here. So when you once you go into billing and have a look at your current plan, I am on just a personal plan. Uh, I'm on a, a monthly a Zoom One Pro account. If you scroll down, there's some examples here that are additional um, subscriptions. So Zoom webinars, you need to select this one, add this one to cart. And I would only do this within the month of your, your launching your program. So if you're planning to host your, your live event in a few weeks from now, I would probably upgrade, subscribe to Zoom webinars to get the, the meeting link. Once you have that link, you can share it with your audience. But this is the first thing you need to do. So there's a few options here. There's up to 500 attendees, 1000 attendees, 3000, 5000, and it each just goes up in price. So you have to have a, a, an idea of how many maximum you can host uh, on the actual call. I would probably say start off with 500 attendees and just buy one license. So you're buying a monthly license for the Zoom webinar function. Now I would just click on monthly one time and then continue and this would add that to cart and then purchase at checkout. You're just buying a one month so it will expire after that first month. If you're launching your program multiple times um, of the year or monthly, you can actually subscribe to their, their monthly. But I would just say start off with one license. Then you've got to think about are you actually going to be doing this solo? Or are you going to have somebody helping you run the tech? If you want a co-host so you can actually share slides or your co-host can share slides or they can manage the chat and the Q&A, then you're going to want to add another user into your account. You need a separate license. Now you don't need two webinar licenses. You can have one webinar license for that month for the whole account. But then your users, you might want to add another user within your account. So here, as you can see, I've just got myself. If I wanted someone to then come on as a co-host with me, I then need to add a user. So here I could just add a basic user and then buy a license at a later date. Or as you're adding the user, you can then, I have no licenses left, you can buy more licenses. So this is a good idea if, if it's your first time, if you have someone helping you out, here, all you need to do is edit your current plan and then all you need to do is buy another license. So here, your licenses, I've just got one on a monthly subscription. If I then added that up to two, then my monthly subscription would double and then I'd save and continue and check, check out this uh, to cart. So that's how you add a Zoom webinar function onto your plan and that's how you add an extra individual within your account buying one more license so you can co-host with them when you go live. So the next thing that I would recommend is making sure that you have all the meeting settings to your liking. So if you go back into my account and then if you go into account management and then if you go into account settings, then down here you have meeting settings. Go into meeting basic and these are all the meeting settings that are gonna be available if you're either in a Zoom meeting or in a Zoom webinar. 
I would recommend you enable chat so you can actually have your participants actually chatting away and then you're going to have a Q&A box. Now, it's really important for you to understand that the difference between the two, if you're hosting a Zoom webinar, there's going to be an area for your participants to chat and an area for your participants to post their questions. Try and give a bit of housekeeping at the start to try and say, always post your questions in the Q&A box and just chat in the chat box. Here, making sure this is the main important one. So your meeting chat is actually selected on. So select it on so everyone can actually use that meeting chat and get the best experience. There are a number of different settings here that you're going to have to look through yourself and actually make sure that you're happy with all these different settings. Now, this is going to make sure um, that your meeting. So, for example, if you're co-host, if you want to allow co-hosts um, to actually have you know, the, the controls of the meeting as well, you, you would enable this one. Go through here how you want to actually run your meeting. Um, screen sharing, who has access to screen sharing? Are you going to invite your co-host to screen share or is it just going to be you sharing slides? So have a look down at all of these just to make sure uh, you're happy with these settings. And the most important thing is to do a tech check. So always have a practice session enabled so you can actually go into the Zoom webinar and actually practice with one of your co-hosts or get somebody else to come in and use the participant link just to make sure everything works. And you can actually screen share. I would recommend getting a second screen if you're sharing slides and then still answering chat and Q&A. But make sure you're happy with the tech. Make sure you're happy with the Zoom webinar because it's not the same as a Zoom room or Zoom meetings. It is slightly different. And then lastly, then I would make sure that the recording is either recorded to the cloud or the recording settings are exactly how you want them. So depending on how you want to show a replay, if you click on the recording tab and then scroll down, making sure that the cloud recording here, uh, record active speaker with, with shared screen or record gallery view with shared screen. So it depends on what you want to actually uh, showcase uh, in terms of a recording, making sure that you've actually got the slides recorded um, and not yourself or if yourself is on uh, the actual slides in the corner, have a go at recording one of your webinars as a test and see how that recording spits out and if you're happy with that or if you want to tweak it slightly. So there are the three things that I would recommend going through before running a live Zoom webinar. Make sure that you actually have the webinar on your account and you might have to purchase another um, another license if you want to co-host it with somebody. Make sure the meeting settings are set to chat and Q&A and actually test them. And then make sure the recording of that meeting actually delivers how you want the replay to show. So that's a quick review of how to use Zoom webinars. Now, Zoom is one of my tools of choice. I do use this platform quite regularly and I scrutinize all of the tools that I use to run this online business. And if you want to get a free downloadable checklist of every single tool that I use to run my online business, head to timpeatman.com forward slash tools and simply download a copy today. So that's it. Hopefully you found this video helpful and I look forward to seeing you again on another one real soon.